In this video, we will be classifying lac operon mutants as dominant or recessive using meridiploids. E. coli prefers glucose as a carbon source, but when glucose is not available, expression of the lac operon is initiated. This allows for the use of lactose as a carbon source. The promoter for lac I is always active, resulting in the lac I gene being constitutively transcribed. Repressor protein lac I controls lac operon expression. It does so by binding to the operator site that overlaps the lac operon promoter. This prevents RNA polymerase from binding and transcribing the lac operon. When only glucose is available, lac I remains bound to the operator and lac operon products are not made. When glucose is used up but lactose is available, allolactose, an alternative form of lactose, binds to the repressor lac I. This causes lac I to undergo a conformational change and dissociate from the operator. RNA polymerase is then recruited to the lac operon promoter, and the lac products are transcribed. The promoter of the lac operon recruits RNA polymerase to transcribe structural genes Z, Y, and A. Genes Z, Y, and A encode lac products that allow E. coli to use lactose as a carbon source. Mutations can occur in the lac operon, and to characterize the source of the mutation, we can introduce an extra wild-type copy of the operon. This is called a meridiploid E. coli strain. A mutation of the lac operon is dominant if the wild-type copy of the operon cannot mask the mutation. A mutation of the lac operon is recessive if the wild-type copy of the operon masks the mutation. We will look at some examples to better understand what is meant by masking the wild-type copy. In our first example, the lac I gene promoter is defective. This means that the lac I gene will not be transcribed or translated into repressor protein lac I. This allows for constitutive expression of the lac operon. The wild-type lac operon, however, does not have a defective promoter and will therefore produce repressor protein lac I. There will be enough lac I produced by the wild-type copy of the gene that the repressor lac I will bind to the operator of both the wild-type and mutant copies of the lac operon. In this scenario, the wild-type is masking the mutant, thus the lac I gene promoter mutation is said to be recessive. In the second example, the operator site is defective. This means that repressor lac I is produced, but it cannot bind the operator. And therefore, lac I cannot repress production of the lac products. This again will allow for constitutive expression of the lac operon. Both the mutant and wild type are producing repressor lac I, but only the wild type copy of the operator can bind the lac I. This means that the lac products continue to be produced from the mutant lac operon, and the wild-type lac operon cannot mask the mutated version. Thus, the operator mutation behaves as dominant. Thank you for watching.